Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back with another game development video to show you what I've been doing. I'm pretty excited this time. I have some cool stuff to show off and I'm really jazzed to show you because it's some new things that I haven't done before that uh, really interact and took a lot of, of thinking and work to pull off gracefully. I think I've shown you this last time. All right, you can click, there's a waypoint, and the player will hoof it over that little waypoint and wait. I also made this crate, which is an interactable element so that the player will go boom and bump right into it and it'll stop. So there's also a, uh, the B button, we hold it down, it shows the boundaries of different things. I don't have the player set up to show that right now, but the player, the waypoint, the uh, crate, they all use the same uh, drawable element and the same bounding box uh, as inherited classes. So I could configure that if I just added a line to do it, but I don't really need to do that right now. So. The other cool thing is, you can now shoot. Oh yeah, pew pew pew. So what you do is you hold down shift and that activates the firing mode. So you can actually run and shoot all at the same time. Unfortunately right now, I, I didn't take the time to rotate the player's sprite to point in the right direction when he's shooting because that doesn't really matter. These are just placeholder graphics for now, you know? So once I get a more final thing, that'll be pretty trivial to, to pull off. So the player is shooting. Additionally, I can place enemies. Um, the enemies, <clears throat> the enemies pick a random destination on the screen, and they move all around and and go where they need to go. A couple of things. First, you notice the crate is not stopping them. I had an enemy in here before that the crate was stopping, um, but I just didn't add that back in because I initially set up one single enemy on the screen, and now I'm using an enemy manager class, which will allow me to create. A bunch of enemies and handle multiple enemies at a time. In the enemy manager class I didn't set it up so that the crate and the enemies will interact yet because one of the next things I'll probably do is like a manager that inter you know manages all the elements on the screen so anywho I can place as many of these guys as I want to. Right now I have a hard limit of five um, but if I, if I destroy one I can place another one so and the really cool thing that I'm very excited about is that I can shoot these guys and they disappear like Atari style you know there's no dramatic deaths or cries of pain or blood or anything so they just kinda go away and I can place more and they come back and I can shoot them so it's pretty cool right I'm pretty pleased like I said I haven't done anything like this before this was a new step for me so I was really excited about this um, so how did I pull this off well there are a few things I did that I haven't done before that were really helpful. Like I mentioned, I made an enemy manager class and I made a projectile manager class. And they both pretty much do the same thing. Starting with the projectile manager, right, it makes an array of projectile objects. Uh, I think I have it set right now to like 100. And since it's a little trickier programming wise to delete objects and add new objects, I just used an array. So what do I mean by that? when I shoot a bullet, a new bullet is not created. And when it gets to the edge of the screen or hits an enemy, the bullet is not destroyed. It's simply there already when the program starts. In fact, there are a hundred of these bullets in an array. And they're just set to active or inactive um, whenever bullets are needed. So if I shoot five of these things, or six or seven, whatever I shot, you know, that many became active and now they're inactive again. If you get to this point where you're trying to set something like this up, if you look online, there's a bunch of information about how people they either use linked lists, they use vectors in C++, or they use arrays. Arrays was the one that was simplest to get my mind around, so I just made an array. I said, the hell with it. You know, rather than do any complicated stuff, at this point, it's just, I view this as like game triage, you know, so I need to just get something done. So I understood arrays as being the easiest to implement so I just went forward with that and it seemed to work out just fine so when I need to check collision I need to check their status I just loop through you know all of the projectiles in the projectiles array or rather my projectile manager class does that then from my games main state it says you know projectile manager update projectiles or projectile manager draw projectiles so I don't have to directly work with all these arrays from in my main state I did the same thing for enemies. So right now, all five enemies in the array are in use. Now there are four in use, there are three, there are one, and now there are none. So 
it just simply keeps recycling. And I assume that further down the road when I have different types of enemies and different types of projectiles, that I'll set their types and then they'll actually be like pointers to whatever the subtype is of of those enemies or projectiles. So, um, I had to get those to interact, which was a little tricky to figure out, but not too much of a problem. I assume the way I'm doing it is pretty close to what other people are doing. Um, my my uh, main state, you know, calls update on the player, the crate, it updates the enemies, updates the projectiles <clears throat> through the enemies, uh, enemy manager and projectile manager. So I just pass those to each other. So I pass the projectile manager into the enemy manager. The enemy manager for each enemy, it checks all the projectiles. And basically, when a projectile hits an enemy, the enemy gets destroyed through the enemy manager, and the projectile manager will deactivate the uh, projectile that hit the enemy. So they both sort of do their own work um, by interacting with each other. I realize that sounds a little tricky, but I think that if you're working on a game project and you get to a point like this, you're going you're gonna to come up with a similar solution. If there's a better way to do it, certainly let me know, but I'm pretty sure this is how, it's, how it goes. Um, it works pretty cleanly, it's not really a problem yet. But again, I'm making it up as I go. So, you know, always open to suggestions if there's a, a standard way of doing this that I'm not aware of. But so far, no problems. So, um, one thing that I'd like to point out that has been really helpful to me is I have a book called Writing Solid Code. It's an old book. And what's really weird is that it's written by a guy that works at Microsoft, right? Microsoft Solid Code? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> working in IT, it's just kind of a, a funny thing to me to think of that. But... You know, um, this guy did a really great book, and he talks about how you add debugging code going into and going out of all your methods and functions, and you just check for conditions that you'd probably never encounter, and if you encounter those, you know, you, you've got a bug, and it helps you actually identify things by checking for illogical values of variables. For example, if there's a Boolean value that should always be true, you should check and see if it's ever false and alert you if it is. And if it is, you know you need to clean something up. So I avoid a lot of bugs and save myself a lot of time by using these sort of methods in this book. And so I've added debugging code, for example, if, um, if an enemy is ever being uh, drawn, or if it's ever updating an enemy, and that enemy is not active, so like the fifth enemy right here is not active, he's not in use, my console would let me know through my debugging uh, method if that enemy is trying to be drawn, or if he's trying to be updated and if he is I know I've got a flaw in my code somewhere and I've actually found some things that way and it's been a big help so I'd really recommend that book uh, I think we can always do better when it comes to writing bug free code and saving ourselves trouble and writing things that are clean and elegant so uh, the next thing I'm gonna be working on is probably the cover system what I wanna do is if you move the cursor to the edge of this crate or something that you should be able to take cover behind I want it to um, show me like a, a highlight of the character and show what the character is going to do. So right here it should show me the character taking cover. If I click, he should move there and, and make it so. And I want to have like a point-to-point -point cover system the way that Splinter Cell Conviction does. So if I had another crate over here, I should be able to click on where I want to go into cover. The character should like leap over this crate and slide into cover on the other crate. So that'll give me a fun tactical system. And then as I'm moving from Sam behind a crate right here, if I'm moving to cover behind this crate, I could shoot on the way, probably with less accuracy than if I was in cover. But that's the idea I have going. So the other thing I worked with was forward declaring um, ob pointers to objects. I had to do that to resolve cyclic dependencies. So like, let's say the enemy manager and the projectile manager uh, needed to know about each other, and I included their header files in each other's header files then that's a cyclic dependency because they both depend on each other and it won't compile. So within one of them I have to declare a pointer to that class object. Um, I kinda get how that works. It's still a little fuzzy to me but I, I mostly get how it works and uh, I basically I guess you just include things and if you can't include them because it creates one of these cyclic dependencies then you just forward declare the object and boom you're good to go. So. I'm sure if any of you guys are real experienced programmers and you're watching my videos, you probably laugh as I'm like working these things out that should be common knowledge, but I mean, I went to college for uh, computer information systems and they were only concerned about programming as far as it, you know, lets you use ASP or write databases or whatever, so it's all kind of new to me, but it makes sense, so I'm hacking it together, so 
Anyway, I hope my video has been helpful to you and or you found it interesting. I want to thank all my my homies that have been, you know, talking to me on Twitter and answering my questions and keeping me uh, updated on their projects and keeping me motivated. I'm still going pretty strong and I'm really actually enjoying this project. So it's been a real blast so far to, to keep it up and keep interacting with you guys. So don't forget, I'm Retro Thomas on Twitter and I'm uh, retrothomas.tumblr.com if you want to see any of my, you know, stuff I post about like Transformers or whatever. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have any... Uh, inspiring and helpful comments or any questions about what I'm up to and take it easy and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.